It's time for another blistering report from the front lines of the cultural war for a constitutional America. And now, here's your host, Charles Benninghoff. We have some terrible judges in this country, especially in the federal judiciary. Some of these judges are so bad at their jobs that it would be difficult to pick out the worst of the bunch. Barack Obama actually appointed a woman to the federal bench who had no courtroom experience. And the Senate confirmed her to serve as a trial judge in a federal district court, just like the one on my background image today. Her main work experience was running a pro-abortion political action committee. I guess if you're a Democrat, that qualifies you to be a federal trial court judge. Common sense says that's not correct. But if we had to pick a candidate for the most unqualified person currently sitting on the federal bench, I think it would go to District Judge James Robart in Seattle, a man who suffers from adult illiteracy. Judge Robart was asked to interpret President Trump's immigration protection order a week ago, and Robart could not even read the plain English language of the U.S. Immigration and Nationality Act. Because Robart can't read English, Robart has tried to overturn settled law that was duly passed by Congress in 1952, and law that has been enforced without any interruptions since then. Judge Robart needs to be impeached, and today I'll tell you how you can use our system to get in touch with Congress and demand that Robart be impeached. By now, you probably heard that President Trump is attempting to protect Americans from getting their heads chopped off by Muslim terrorists. So the president signed an executive order to temporarily restrict travel into America from seven countries that are known for breeding terrorists. Those countries, by the way, are Iraq, Iran, Sudan, Libya, Somalia, Yemen, and Syria. The only thing bad I can say about President Trump's immigration protection order is that he left off 49 other countries in the Islamic Caliphate, and that has to be added back into this list eventually. And because the mainstream media won't tell you this fact, I'll mention it here. The United States federal prisons are now housing 60 separate immigrants and refugees from those seven countries for charges of terrorism and attempted terrorism. And of course, that number doesn't include Muslims like the Somali refugee who wounded 11 people last November when he ran his car up on the sidewalk in Ohio and then jumped out and started hacking people with a machete until a cop shot him dead. The president has a discretion to restrict aliens or any other class of people from any part of the world. That's settled law, it's in plain English, but James Robart apparently can't read English. <laughs> That's why we need to remove him from the bench and replace him with somebody who can read English. Let me read to you the statute in question that Robart obviously couldn't understand because of his inability to read. Here it is from the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952. That's U.S. Code 8, Section 1182, and I quote, Suspension of entry or imposition of restrictions by the President. Whenever the President finds that the entry of any aliens or of any class of aliens into the United States would be detrimental to the interests of the United States, he may by proclamation and for such period as he deems necessary suspend the entry of all aliens or any class of aliens as immigrants or non-immigrants or impose on the entry of aliens any restrictions he may deem to be appropriate. And I close that quote. How could it get any more clear than that? There are some four-syllable words in there that might be a little tricky for a second grader, but it's not too difficult for District Judge Robart of Seattle if he could read. Robart's opinion on the case is that Congress and the President of the United States need to bow down to his personalized political opinion and to hell with the law of the land of the United States. It's a judge's opinion that accounts in Robart's courtroom, not our laws. Robart issued a nationwide restraining order on an immigration protection measure that the president has full authority to impose. The only explanation I can see for Robart to misinterpret plain English like this is if Robart, in fact, cannot read. He's illiterate. We can't have illiterate judges on our federal courts. He has also shown extreme negligence and dereliction of duty in this decision, which are additional reasons to impeach him. 
The protection of the United States citizens is a foremost duty of our court system. Muslim immigrants and refugees from these seven countries are a dangerous threat to the safety and security of America, and every single one of them needs to be vetted. Until they can be vetted, they should be able to be restricted by order of the president, just like the law says. They cannot be properly vetted for ties to terrorist groups at this time. They cannot be vetted to determine if they are criminals at this time. We have to wait until every single one of them is able to be vetted to be a non-terrorist and a non-criminal. We should have an immigration standard that allows zero criminals, zero terrorists, and zero welfare queens into our country. Yet Robart and the liberal media that is applauding his illiteracy feel that it's more important to keep America's borders wide open so that Islamic jihadis can run amok on our streets. The people that President Trump is blocking are dangerous people. You wouldn't know it from watching the news in America, though. But the Muslim immigrants and refugees in France have been rioting and looting there and burning cars for four straight days now, all because of a rumor that a police officer might and I say might, have harmed a Muslim. 73% of the babies born in Paris, France, are now foreign-born because France is under the control of globalists who are Islamicizing that country. But that's what judges like James Robart apparently want to do to America. We have to push back against these judges and push back hard. Robart needs to be kicked off the bench. But the only way that that will happen is if we the people, that's you and me and all our friends, demand that Congress file articles of impeachment against Robart. Here's how you can help. Go to our action page today. Send personalized letters to Congress, starting with the House Judiciary Committee. Tell them to impeach Judge Robart because he can't read English and because he's placed you and your family in danger at the hands of terrorists all to assuage his own personal political opinion and clearly in violation of stated law. So do it now. Bob Mallory will have instructions for you on the next screen describing how you can get to our action page. Take action and be an action hero. So stay tuned. This is Charles Benninghoff signing off and wishing you freedom, fulfillment, and God's many, many blessings. Tell Congress to impeach Judge James Robart for his failure to read plain English, as well as negligence and dereliction of duty. If you're on our action page on our website, use the form next to the video screen to select a program. If you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, click the icon appearing now to find a link to our action page, or check the video's description to find the link. Speak out today.